Good morning and welcome to day 159 of 365 days as we're going through the Bible in a full year from Genesis to Revelations. And right now we're going through the Bible following the adventure timeline created by Jeff Cavins. And we are in the period of Messianic checkpoint number two. So we're going through the Gospel of Mark. Right now we are um, getting through the second half of Mark as we are going to be reading Mark chapters 11 to 12 and Psalm number 67. So a little bit about Mark 11 and 12. We read about the days leading up to Jesus' betrayal. Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem where he faces his passion, death, and resurrection. Stakes are getting higher and Jesus' teachings are becoming more pointed. Mark 12, we see the parable of the wicked tenant who again uh, represents the people of Israel. The key takeaway here is that, uh, that a disciple of Jesus must bear fruit. If one does not bear fruit, then the question is whether he or she is a true disciple of the Lord. If we belong to Jesus, our lives should witness the fruits of the Spirit. When Jesus cleanses the temple, he does so because his Father's house is intended to be a house of prayer. This is a metaphor for baptism, when our souls become living temples of the Holy Spirit. And the final part of Mark 12 presents us with the offering of the poor widow. The tithe is intended to be the first 10% of one's income, whereas the widow gives everything. Both our first fruits and our final fruits belong to God. Everything from the first to last, we have to ask ourselves how we can love God with our entire lives today. Psalm 67 is a psalm of the, for the director of music, and this is to be played on stringed instruments. The author of this is unknown, but what we do know is that um, some call it a missionary psalm, a psalm of thanksgiving and praise for a particular abundant harvest which God has blessed Israel with, and also that God brings the blessing of salvation to the nations of the earth through the blessing of Israel. So Israel is to be a blessing for all nations. And so we see this in Psalm 67. So, but let's get into this. Mark chapters 11 and 12. Chapter 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Beth Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are doing this, tell them the Lord needs it, and will send it back shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seen in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overthrew the tables and the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him. For they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, they went out to the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. <laughs> have faith in God Jesus answered I tell you the truth if anyone says to this mountain go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says will happen it will be done for him 
Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that the Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. They arrived again in Jerusalem, and while Jesus was walking in the temple courts, the chief priests and the teachers of law and the elders came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? they asked. And who gave you authority to do this? Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, was it from heaven or from men? Tell me. They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, Then why don't you believe him? But if we say from man, they feared the people, for everyone held John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Jesus said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Chapter 12 Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a pit for the wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he rented a vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. But they seized him, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Then he sent another servant to them. They struck this man on the head and treated him shamefully. He sent still another, and that one they killed. He sent many others. Some of them they beat, others they killed. He had one left to send, a son whom he loved. He sent him last of all, saying, They will respect my son. But the tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. Haven't you read the scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and is marvelous in our eyes. Then they looked for a way to arrest him because they knew he had spoken the parable against them. But they were afraid of the crowd. So they left and went away. Later they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. But you teach the ways of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pray or should should we pay or shouldn't we? Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you asking to trap me? He asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought a coin and he asked them, Whose portrait is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. And Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. Then the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us, that, it is a, that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and have children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married and died without leaving any children. The second one married the widow, but he also died, leaving no children. It was the same with the third. In fact, none of the seven left any children. Last of all, the woman died too. At the resurrection, whose wife will she be, since the seven were married to her? Jesus replied, Are you not in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Now about the dead rising, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the accounts of the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. One of the teachers Allah came and heard him debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. 
to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, to love your neighbors yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Jesus saw that he had answered wisely. He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, How is it that the teachers of the law say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted in the marketplaces, and having the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. Such men will be punished more severely. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put, and watching the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small silver copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor woman has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Psalm, Psalm 67. For the director of music with stringed instruments, a psalm, a song. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us, that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God, may all the people praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the people justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the people praise you, O God, may all the people praise you. Then the land will yield its harvest and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. Here ends our second reading. It's interesting we see at the beginning of Psalm 67, we see um, a, re, a re-remembering of the blessing, the Aaronic blessing that we see in uh, Exodus. As it says, may God be gracious to us and bless us, make his face shine upon us. Uh, that's part of that Aaron, that we, that we, uh, that benediction that we have at the end of most of our Lutheran services. And so uh, we see this um, this knowledge of God as a God of blessing. Uh, he blesses, not only does he bless uh, the people of Israel, but all nations, as it says in verse four, may the nations be glad and sing for joy for the rule, for you rule the people justly and guide the nations of the earth. So God not only blesses his people Israel, but through his people Israel, we see the blessing of all nations uh, and the salvation comes to all nations because of, uh, because of God. Uh, it's, it's great. And then we see in, uh, we see in our gospel Mark today, um, we see many, many stories nearing the end of Jesus's ministry on earth. We see him in his triumphal entry um, and then him clearing the tables uh, when he's in the uh, in the temple, saying that God's house is a house of prayer and not a house uh, for people to sell money and merchandise, uh, he withers the fig tree as a sort of symbol of what happens when people don't bear good fruit. Uh, we are called as God's disciples to lead lives in such a way that we bear much fruit, um, and that the outpouring of our actions would bear good fruit. Uh, and then he talks about those who don't bear good fruit. And he talks about the parable of the tenants, the people, um, the leaders of Israel who persecuted his prophets. And he talks, he give, and this is an analogy, the parable of the tenant, those who are, are <clears throat> um, the man who plants the vineyard, he puts a wall around it, uh, digs a wine press and builds a watchtower. He rents the vineyards out to some farmers. So, I mean, the uh, this parable. I mean, the man who plants a vineyard—that's God, and uh, and then and then those who come in his stead, uh, who are those who are to be the leaders of Israel, who are to um, take care of it. But they, they, uh, anyone who's called to 
bring them to account, his prophets. That's what prophets were to do. Prophets were to be kind of like the uh, the covenant police in the sense that they would come and they would say, are you following the covenant? Are you obeying God's laws? Are you doing what God asks for you to do? And uh, and then they hold, they're to hold the, the those who are, who are, in this sense, renting God's land uh, accountable. And so, but what happens is they continue to, to hurt and to beat and eventually kill. And then he sends his only son, which Jesus, and how they will eventually kill him too and throw him out of the vineyard. Um, but he, he gives a very stark warning here that the stone the builder rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and is marvelous in our eyes. So Jesus is that, that cornerstone, the capstone, and who he's bringing to bring uh reconciliation for his people but yet it will be rejected by the leaders of the day so it's a very harsh warning to the people that are leading um the israelites and then he talks about paying taxes the caesar is very smart in his answers here the greatest commandment it's funny here he uses the shema as we see at the very beginning hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one here the word means shema right in in the hebrew and and so he says what is the Great, what is the greatest commandments? Well, he starts with the Shema and he tells about loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and loving your neighbors yourself. Uh, and then we see the uh, who is the Son of God. Uh, we see that um, explaining how David is not, Jesus is not David's son, but that he is greater than David. Uh, and that the widow's offering, the, the widow gives of her whole self. Um, and her sim the symbol of her putting in is to show that she is dedicated so much to the cause that she gives all that she has. And we are called to give all that we have uh, to God, uh, just as the widow does here. That even though we're only called, called by God to give 10%, uh, we are also called to give of our whole lives. And this is what this symbolizes with the widow. And so some, uh, some interesting readings. But uh, we read together all these things uh, as we go through the Bible, learning more and more the character of God and the importance of, of God's um, goodness. Uh, as we study his goodness, we also think about how we are to communicate with him, and we do that through prayer. So let us pray to God. Father in heaven, you have blessed us. Every single day you give us blessing of a new day. Every single day you give us the blessing of your mercy. Your mercies are new every single morning. And you give us a new day every single morning. A new day to honor you, a new day that we might come to know you more uh, as you reveal us, uh, your image to us uh, through your son, Jesus Christ, and through your word. That we receive your inscription upon our hearts, that we love you and everything that you have made to love our neighbors as ourselves. God, help us first to be loved as fully as possible can be. Help us to give you permission once again to love us this morning to forgive us this morning and give us your grace. Help us to give the permission to claim us as your own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me again in this journey for today as we go through the Bible. May you, uh, maybe you be blessed through this reading and may God continue to work through you um, as you uh, bear fruit uh, for all of creation. Uh, have a wonderful day. May you be a blessing to those around you as God has been to you. Amen.